Today we are going to discuss about the origin of ocean basins. This is the first lecture of oceanography. After that, so we will discuss about the marine sedimentation, the waves, tides, everything one by one. So today is the first class and that is the origin of ocean basins. Here we will go to discuss about the opening and closing of ocean basins, Wilson cycle, all those things. So now here, what we are going to discuss, the Wilson cycle, that is the opening and closing of ocean basins, sea floor spreading and its calculation. Then we will go to the continental drift. And after that, we will discuss about modern plate boundaries, earthquake zones with respect to the modern plate boundaries, then concepts of earthquakes in ocean basins. Then at the end, we will discuss about the structures of ocean basins. So friends, this is very important to know about the earthquake zones, structures, modern plate boundaries, because all these things are directly related to tsunamis and all those hazards. So this is very important to know about everything about the plate boundaries, about the earthquake zones of ocean basins. Now, in the first slide, we are going to discuss about Wilson cycle. All of you know about the plate tectonics concept that subduction, that con uh, sub subduction, continental drift, all those things. But here in this Wilson cycle, Wilson cycle is going to discuss all of you about the opening and closing of ocean basins. Remind it that when it is go to plate tectonics, it discuss about all the plates, but Wilson cycle is not will discuss uh, about all the plates. It will go to discuss about all the ocean basins. Okay, so there here in Wilson cycle, the sequence of opening and closing of ocean basins and the ocean basins evolution with respect to time. This can uh, say you. Uh, now you can see that Arabali mountain belt, it is very highly mineralized deposits that um, Zawar, lead zinc deposit, all those things are there. But think about those things. Those are uh, once upon a time, those are a part of ocean basins. Now those are very beautiful hilly mountains. So how these types of things develop, how those opening and closing of ocean basins occurs, all these things, the Wilson cycle can describe you. Here in the first diagram, you can see that there is a uplift, uplift in motion and the complex system of linear reef valleys on continents. Here, because of upliftment, there is a tension developed. And because of the tension, two sides of the plates, two sides of the plates move apart. And because of this one juvenile ocean basin, juvenile basin forms. Then because of this divert juvenile basin, juvenile basin forms. And uh, you can see these types of uh, divergence in modern sea, in modern area, modern time in Red Sea. Red Sea is uh, growing right now. There is a uh, tension and because of the tension, Red Sea is growing day by day. Okay, and uh, stay, uh, with mature stage, there is diverging and spreading uh, of these uh, plates occurs. And uh, after that, at the, at the end, they, those plates collide with the continental plates or or another oceanic plates in the subduction zone where accretionary plism develops and because of this there is upliftment develops trains trains are the products of these types of subduction areas and finally the ocean basin close in the con convergent boundary so this is the sequence of wilson cycle in the next slide we will discuss about the sea floor spreading. All those things that is the sea. Sea is generating in the mid oceanic regions where the hot molten magma comes in the surface of the ocean and from there the ocean basins develops. The divergence of a basaltic crust away from the crest line on this ridge. That means in the mid oceanic ridge where there is divergence, that is, that means the two plates move apart from each other, new hot molten magma comes and this molten magma forms the new basaltic crust on the ocean surface. 
and magnetic anomaly stripes formed because of normal and reverse magnetic poles when one um, one basaltic stripe formed after some time or after some hundred years after some millennia then again uh, new magma erupted and again those uh, magma will get magnetized that is called thermal remnant magnetization it magnetized along the present position of the earth's magnetic pole and so accordingly different magnetic stripes forms and with the help of these magnetic stripes in uh, uh, in both of the parts of that mid oceanic ridge we can calculate the rate of sea flow spreading from these magnetic stripes here in this diagram you can see that this is a ridge crest and these are b b dust c c dust these are the different magnetic stripes look c and c dust they are once formed together they were once in the position of a now they are apart from each other and they are recording their their paleo pole position and everything so this is the form of no the magnetic and um, normal and uh, reverse magnetic poles and now we can go to the next slide where we can easily here you can easily understand that how these normal and reverse magnetic poles formed look at the this image here is geographic north pole and this is the south pole and this is the geomagnetic north pole the geomagnetic south pole is also there so when the magma erupts it takes the thermal remnant magnetization of that geomagnetic pole that thermal remnant when the magma get cooled they take the present position of that geomagnetic pole here you can see that there are normal and reverse normal and reverse magnetization with respect to age when the magma erupted they were in the normal magnetic poles they were they were parallel to the normal magnetic poles and then with respect to time when another magma eruption take place the geomagnetic pole was reversed so it records the then time of magnetic pole position then again it takes the position of normal magnetic poles with respect to the geomagnetic field of the earth so all these normal reverse magnetization stripes represent the present magnetic pole of that time when that magma erupted when that magma cooled and they take the thermal remnant magnetization of that time and they represent the geomagnetic pole position of that time so this is the magnetization of lavas in this diagram we are showing now think about how we can understand that these magnetic anomalies this is normal reverse normal reverse how think about the present magnetic position okay when uh, it is now normally magnet normally magnetized so when we go to the field and we take the magnetic intensity values now it is normal magnetized field when we find any normal magnetized basalt it will add with the present value so it will give the high high magnetic intensity but when we will find any reverse magnetized basalt because the present magnetic field is normal and we are finding something reverse it will give you some negative value look at this that negative value so add plus and plus will give you add but plus with minus will give you something low so here this magnetic anomalies we can easily found in field with the magnetic intensity detectors now in the next slide we will show you some important magnetic polarity time scales think this magnetic polarity time scales are very important not only for these are uh, only coming in exams or some csr net exams but also for these are very important for oceanographic researches you can see that gilbert goss machuama brunes these are the polarity epochs and here with respect to time you can see that how they are representing the normal and reverse magnetic field with the 
art normal polarity stripes and reverse polarity stripes now geomagnetic north pole is here and geomagnetic north pole is also here so these are the normal polarity here geographic north pole is here but geomagnetic south pole is here it just get reverse so this is the reverse polarity how this normal and reverse polarity happens it is because the convection currents of the out uh, outer core and the mantle the inner core is solid when inner inner and it can rotate and because of this a geodynamic geodynamo formed and that gives you the magnetic position of the earth so from there we can get the magnetization effects of the earth so now in this picture you can easily understand when the geomagnetic pole and the geographic north pole is uh, uh, is um, superimposed one upon another or they are just in one direction that we can say as normal polarity but when they are just reverse that means geographic north pole comes with the geomagnetic south pole we can say it a reverse polarity and all those things are happening one of the reason is the geodynamic effect of the earth and the movement of the inner core solid inner core which is composed of nickel and iron with that a uh, hot molten outer core so because of this normal and reverse polarity different geomagnetic polarity forms with respect to time these are gilbert gauss matsuyama and brunus with respect to age if you see that the matsuyama is mostly reverse in field some also positive or normal is there but mostly it is reverse but look at prunus it is the mostly in normal field so that pole position changing is recorded with this geomagnetic polarity time scales now in the next slide we will see how to calculate the spreading rates with these geomagnetic a pole positions and the distance from their polarity change from the crest of that mid oceanic ridge here you can see that this is the normal and reverse normal and reverse position of those mid oceanic ridge or ocean ridge basalt stripes and this is the this is showing the sea floor spreading when uh, and this is the hypothetical geomagnetic polarity scale now take it reverse normal reverse normal now here is a point a how we can calculate the rate of spreading of that position a from the mid oceanic ridge they are uh, moving apart from each other but we know that they are moving from apart from each other but how to calculate the rate so for the for this calculation we have to know the distance a from the crest from this is the crest and we have to know the distance simply so here it is 10 km then the time of polarity change it is 10 to the power 6 years here so now we can say that it is 1 cm per year of that position of rate of spreading at the point a similarly we can also uh, correlate we can also take uh, tell the rate of spreading of any points if you rate of spreading of any point if you see the earth map the plates and uh, the motion of those plates are not uh, same everywhere somewhere it is 2 mm per year that is north at atlantic somewhere it is uh, 160 mm per year that is east pacific rise somewhere uh, it is uh, 10 mm per year between africa and eurasia here the closure of basins occurs somewhere it is 80 mm per year that is between nazaka plate and south america plate the last two is the model gives the rates of closure closure and the first two is the separation of the motion so it, you can see that the rate of motion is not everywhere the same so it is very necessary to calculate the rate of spreading so to calculate it this formula we can directly use it here we can use the distance a from the crest and then time of polarity change at that at that point
these are showing the magnetic anomaly stripes of along the mid oceanic ridges this is the this is the mid oceanic ridge and along the divergent motion the magnetic anomaly magnetic anomaly stripes are false with respect to the present with respect to the present position of magnetic pole of that time so this is simple to calculate the rate of spreading at any point now we will go to the continental drift now we are going to say about continental drift if you see the present world map you can see if you see the present position of india america and different plates of south africa australia you can see that there is a zigzag puzzle type of structure the african plate and the south american plate are a part of a zigzag puzzle and the indian plate and the australian plate are also another part of zigzag puzzle so what these things indicate if you see if you if 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 you think about that continental drift there are some evidences that this drifting of those continents occurs that is the parbo carboniferous glaciation think about the glacial glacial evidences of talchir that is in the lower gondwana below the raniganj coal beds and all this talchir glaciation events is found in so many plates that is in africa also in australia also maybe the name is different but the time span and that glaciation events they are recorded in different continental parts so this is the evidence this is one big evidence that that continental drift happens and then again the come then again it comes the gondwana coal beds the gondwana coal beds the gondwana coal beds are found in uh, different parts in africa south america also and australia india all those places the same gondwana coal field is found in india this gondwana coal fields are found along the damodar valley along the mohanodi valley some important coal bearing horizons at the raniganj jhoria jhoria is giving us coal from last 100 years or more than that so these are the very important uh, economically important places of india then there is a another evidence that traces of opposite continental margins look at the south american plate and the african plate and if you i i told you that there was a zigzag puzzle like structures indian plate australian plate if we take all the continents together there is a matching boundary so this is the traces of opposite continental margins so this indicates that once upon a time all these plates were together and then they moved apart and now they are at their present position they are not attached with each other but with that boundary we can say that once upon a time they were together and uh, again also with their apparent polar wandering path of different positions of that uh, p different plates we can say that these um, these uh, con continents were once upon a time were together so these are the main evidence of continental drift that is parmo carboniferous glaciation gondwana coal beds traces of opposite continental margins apparent polar wandering path other than these so many evidences are there like that gondwana flora that is glossopteris gangomopteris and all those lower gondwana flora you can find in south africa also you can find in australia also along with india so these are the so many evidences are there of those continental drifts one by one but now we will focus on the continental drift and we will move apart that how many times this continental drift occurs with respect to geological time so if you take this geological time scale so many times the these continental drifts happens in the cambrian gondwana land very likely existed as a supercontinent coexisted with three other cretonic centers laurasia baltica and siberia laurasia is nothing but north america and greenland and baltica is northern europe and siberia 
in the cambrian they were together and after that they moved apart then in the silurian laurasia and baltica fused together during the caledonian orogeny and the gap between gondwana and laurasia closed at silurian devonian boundary at the silurian devonian boundary uh, the gap between gondwana and laurasia closed that is in the 410 million year and this is called the acadian orogeny and in the late devonian laurasia separated from gondwana land laurasia separated from gondwana land then in the late carboniferous that is in the 350 million year collide they collide again in the during the harkinian orogeny by the late carboniferous pangaea was complete that is during the 300 million year this is the very important time period that is the late carboniferous the permian uh, the, 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 the that is the late carboniferous the the pangaea was com complete and after that that during the permian jurassic time the pangaea was together pangaea existed in late paleozoic and early mesozoic their dispersal into their present position took place largely in the late cretaceous and tertiary so you can see the evidences of those different types of fossils and different types of coal beds different types of lower gondwana fossils and some jurassic that is the lystrosaurus fossils of uh, raniganj area and all those things you can see in those these panji in uh, different parts of gondwana land because pangaea was existed during the late paleozoic and early mesozoic times then in the late cretaceous there was another late cretaceous you can see in this that is the 65 million year when the deccan volcanic events also started they moved apart and uh, they started their migration from their gondwana position and now at the present the, this is the uh, world map and here all the continents were once uh, were uh, all the continents they are the, the, the once upon a time those which were in a southern continent they are mostly now in the northern hemisphere not all but mostly they are they comes in the northern hemisphere they took a northward journey and this is the present position of all those continents at present time now if on uh, here we in the last slide we share about the continental drift and now you should know about the some poor modern examples of those different types of plate boundaries that is the mid oceanic ridge subduction zone that is the transform faults there are some disable will show you some modern examples that is mid atlantic ridge mid atlantic ridge uh, it is the i think mid atlantic is the modern ocean and so mid, mid atlantic uh, atlantic is growing now it is the modern ocean so mid atlantic ridge is a very beautiful example of mid oceanic ridge here divergent of plate occurs if you go to the subduction zone the aleutian islands andes mountains himalayan mountains all those mountain chains they are the subduction zones here in the himalayan mountains continent continent collision occurs that is the indian plate collide with asian plates once upon a time in between them there was the tethys sea and because of the upliftment of that sediments the himalayan mountain systems occurs different form different ophiolite sites are also present in their that himalayan mountain belts these uh, these are the evidences of those tethys sea and the basaltic events of those the basaltic events of those uh, sea all those things are uh, very beautifully present on those ophiolite complexes and the san andreas fault is an example of transform fault in present day where there is very shallow to weak to moderate intensity earthquakes these are the uh, these are uh, these uh, these are the, uh, so the, the this uh, table showing the rate of earthquakes also along those different plate boundaries now if we see that the different plate boundaries there uh, and in this uh, in this image 
the uh, we are showing the movement of different lithospheric plates if you see the north atlantic plate north atlantic plate it is 20 centi 20 mm per year it is the rate of separation of plate boundaries here in the north atlantic plate we are moving apart from each other north atlantic plate is moving apart from each other so the rate is 20 mm per year but if you see the african and eurasian plates the rates of closure it is 10 mm per year and in the nazaka plate the rate of closure is 80 mm per year nazaka plate is closing with the south american plate and and here the rates of closure is 80 mm per year so if you see the different rates you can see that the plate motion is not constant everywhere there is different rates of motions also this is very few but the rates of motion is varying it is not constant so because now we will go to the next slide where you can see the earthquake distribution zones along with different plate boundaries here you see that the different plate boundaries are the mostly earthquake prone zones so which type of earthquakes this this map is global distribution of earthquakes and you can see that the or the earthquake zones are nothing but the plate boundaries these are uh, well, these are correlated or these are the these are the zones of plate boundaries where disturbances occurs now if you see in that why these types of earthquake zones and why different earthquake zones is happening in different parts these diagrams will show you something some earthquakes we can show say as shallow focus earthquakes that is they are up to the range of 70 kilometer some earthquakes are medium focus earthquake that is they are they 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 range up to 70 to 300 kilometer and the deep focus earthquakes ranges from 300 to 700 kilometers now you can see that this is a subduction zone model and this is the benioff zone benioff zone means that is the earthquake um, benioff zones uh, benioff zones where different earthquakes are happening and uh, intermediate focus earthquake deep focus earthquake shallow focus earthquake all these things are are happen all these things can happen the in the subduction zone all the major earthquakes are happening in the subduction zones although meteorogenic ridge and transform pulse plate disturbance occurs there but most of the very deep focus earthquakes happening in the subduction zone now if you see this model here you can see everything together that is the mid oceanic ridge that is the subduction zone and here is the formation of cranes everything is there in this diagram in the spreading range in the spreading uh, spreading range that is in the mid oceanic ridge very shallow focus earthquakes are happening but in the subduction zones deep focus earthquake happens spreading in the spreading range the plate in the spreading ridge the heat flow is highest at the ocean ridges because here the molten magma is coming directly to the ocean surface through the mid oceanic ridge so if you see the ocean if you think about the ocean basalt a positive uh, positive magnetic gravity anomaly is there because of high density basaltic material but if you come to the mid oceanic ridge because of that molten magma there is a low density creates and there is a negative anomaly is superposed along the overall positive anomaly along the mid oceanic ridge because here separation occurs because because of that because of that uh, high temperature magma high temperature and low density molten material at shallow depth in the crest and if you see at the destructive plate boundary boundary here the ocean plates takes its oldest age that is the maximum age happens and this is the this becomes very cold and because of this they are the danger and in the trench there are low density sediments along with some water muds and all those things happens there and because of these along the trench you can find a 
very negative negative gravity anomaly but if you come towards the subduction zones towards the uh, towards the subducting plate down you can see that in these positions the high density materials that is eclogites and all those things forms so because of this the because of this there is a positive gravity anomaly we can observe so um, these are the gravity anomaly ranges of constructive and destructive mount boundaries you can say and in these diagrams also you can say see that the uh, four arc basin back arc basin accretionary prisms these are the positions where accretionary prisms developed so these accretionary prisms are very important for uh, exploration applications and all those things now we will go to the next slide that is the structures of those ocean basins when there is a, a uh, when there is compression because of this compression positive flower structures forms and because of the tension pull apart basin develops and negative flower structures forms in this pull apart basin and in this compressive areas positive flower structures forms if you see the segmented ocean ridge this is the position of ocean ridge now you have to know that which type of fault is uh, where in that in that mid oceanic ridge you can see the development of normal fault because here one plate is moving apart from another that because of the tension where the one plate is moving apart from another the the plate material sag and because of that normal fault developed along the mid oceanic ridge but where the uh, but, but here you can see the transform faults develops during the breaking of that reef valleys the transform fault in this diagram you can see that this is the position of transform faults so throughout the ocean you cannot found the transform faults transform faults are found in the ocean basins but in some places you should know that where the normal faults are, are developed where these these normal faults also are very few in amount or very very precise with respect to the transform faults transform faults are very vast you can see that these are you can find big amount of transform faults that the normal faults but where the move apart is there that is along the mid oceanic ridges you can find normal faults uh, here you can see that the sedimentary rocks skews uh, squeezed by compression and because of these positive structures that is folded rocks faults all those things all those things forms and because of this compression some uh, positive flower structures that is called tulip structures those types of structures also you can find and some superposed deformations of different categories of found because of these compressions sometimes you can get uh, 0 1 2 sometimes uh, these types of super uh, superposed deformations also you can find if you go to aravalli mountain range you can find superposed deformation pattern 3 and sometimes more deformation also you can find so these are the indications of that sedimentary rocks squeezed by compression and uh, here we are finally we can say that all these things we have taken in these slides and all those things we are not telling about this open uh, opening of ocean basins or that formation of ocean basins is we have taken everything is from paul r pinat so references are going to that um, this book this is a very beautiful book all of you can try and along with those some other books are also there in market you can follow but uh, al uh, along according to me this is a very beautiful book you can follow it easily and the language is very simple so maybe it's a very thick book but because of that simple language you can go through this book easily and i will suggest you to go through fundamentals of geophysics by william lowry to understand all those geophysical things geophysical parameters along with the different plate boundaries along with the different uh, continental plates to understand properly Thank you.